This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can find all the cards in this video in their store by using the links in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone, and it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. Today, we're going to look at the rebound mechanic. If you cast a spell with rebound from your hand, you exile it as it resolves, and then at the beginning of your next upkeep, you can cast it from exile without paying its mana cost. So, with Virulent Swipe, for example, you end up paying only one black mana and you get the spell twice, although you have to wait until your next upkeep to get it that second time. Generally speaking, the mechanic tends to give you a lot for your mana investment, provided you're willing to wait. Rebound made its debut in 2010's Rise of the Eldrazi, and it has since been a major mechanic in Cons of Tarkir, Commander 2017, and Modern Horizons. Recently, it's become a deciduous mechanic, meaning that while it may not be a major feature in a set, it does show up from time to time on one or two cards, like it did on a couple of cards in the Doctor Who set. To be eligible for this list, a card had to have rebound or be able to grant rebound to your spells. In all, there were 34 cards eligible for this list, and in it, we'll look at the 10 that have left the biggest impact on competitive magic. Before we get started, here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A first tier top 8 is worth 2 points, this includes events like Pro Tours, and a second tier top 8 is worth 1 point. This includes events like Regional Championships. Alright, without further ado, let's look at the top 10 cards with Rebound. At number 10, it's Oher Pak Patik, Deepest Epic. This god was printed in Lost Caverns of Ixalan as the only card with Rebound, so it's another example of the mechanic's current deciduous designation. Anyway, Oher Pak Patik is 2 generic and 2 blue for a 4-3 with flying, and whenever you cast an instant from your hand, it gains rebound. Like the other Ixalan gods, when it dies, it returns to the battlefield transformed into a land, in this case as Temple of Cyclical Time, which enters tap to three time counters on it. You can tap the land for one blue mana and remove a time counter from the temple, and once you get rid of all those counters, you can pay two generic and a blue and tap the land to transform it back into a god. So, this god is definitely pushed as it has some pretty solid stats, doubles your instants, and doesn't stay dead forever. In fact, it gives you a little mana boost when it dies too, which is definitely upside. So far, it's only seen a bit of play in Standard, where it's been played in Esper Raffine decks, which have plenty of spells to copy, while also being really interested in legendary creatures like this god. It's also seen a bit of play in Demir Control decks. It's in Standard for quite a while, so it is pretty likely to move higher on this list in the future. At number 9, it's Center Soul. This rebound spell costs 1 generic and a white, and it gives target creature you control protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Obviously, the first time you cast this, it can come as a big surprise and protect your creature from removal, while the second time won't come as a surprise at all, but getting protection at the beginning of your turn has value too. This is because you can use it to make a creature unblockable. It gained all of its points in standard heroic decks that could get extra value out of getting two targets out of a single card too, as getting two triggers out of your battle-wise hoplite and his friends was pretty awesome. It doesn't gain any points since rotating out of standard though. At number 8, it's Faithless Salvaging. For one generic and a red, this is an instant, and you discard a card and draw a card. This is kind of a fun replacement for Faithless Looting, which was banned in Modern before Faithless Salvaging got printed. While it's not quite as good as Looting, which lets you draw two and discard two for only one red and has flashback, Faithless Salvaging is good for the same reason Looting is. It helps you load your graveyard and dig deeper into your deck, and it does it pretty efficiently. It's gained all of its points in Modern Arclight Phoenix decks, which like getting stuff in the graveyard and casting as many spells as possible. Obviously, Faithless Salvaging is great at doing both of those things, it doesn't have any points since 2022, though. At number 7, it's Emerge Unscathed. This is a strictly better version of Center Soul, as it has the exact same effect for only a single white mana. It saw a bit of play in Standard, where it was featured in decks that tried to cheat Eldrazi Conscription into play. Emerge Unscathed could be used to protect the creature you stick it on, at first to prevent removal from blowing you out, and then the second trigger would make the creature even harder to block, and those two swings usually meant the game was over for your opponent, as a result of all that damage and annihilation. It's also been played in Popper, a format where only commons are legal, where it tends to be featured in heroic decks, much like the standard ones that Center Soul was part of. It doesn't have any points so far in 2024, but it certainly isn't impossible for it to put up some more top 8s in Popper. At number 6, it's Stagger Shock. For 2 generic and a red, this instant does pretty much exactly what its name would tell you. It does 2 damage to any target, and then later you get another shock, but staggered, because of course it has rebound. It's gained all of its points in standard red deck wins, which were perfectly happy to use this to get blockers out of the way or to damage the opponent. 
Like most mono red aggro decks, these decks also add a few ways to get extra value out of casting spells, like Chandra's Phoenix, which can come back whenever your opponent gets burned. Staggershock hasn't gained any points since rotating out of standard. At number 5, it's Consuming Vapors. For 3 generic and a black, this sorcery forces target player to sacrifice a creature, and you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. 4 mana is a little expensive for an edict, but it's a pretty good deal for two of them. Plus, removing creatures and gaining life at the same time is one of the best ways for a control deck to stabilize. While it saw a bit of play in standard Jun decks and modern Demir control, it did the most work in Legacy, where it was primarily a sideboard card. It could be brought in against opponents looking to win the game with one huge creature. Making your opponent sacrifice the Emrakul they cheated into play was pretty sweet, but it hasn't gained any points since 2011. At number 4, it's Narset Transcendent. For 2 generic, a white and a blue, she's a 6 loyalty planeswalker. She makes it on this list because of her minus 2, which gives rebound to the next instant or sorcery spell you cast from your hand this turn. She's also got a plus 1, which lets you look at the top card of your library and put it into your hand if it's a non-creature, non-land card. And she has a minus 9, which is an ultimate that gives you an emblem that says, your opponent can't cast non-creature spells. The whole package is pretty nice here. As in a spell-heavy deck, her plus one is likely to draw you a card, and her minus two is likely to double all kinds of spells. Giving rebound to things that don't normally have it can be particularly spicy, as obviously enough spells without rebound tend to be more efficient. She also happens to start with a ton of loyalty for a four-mana planeswalker, making it pretty likely you get multiple abilities, and you might even fire off that ultimate. Between 2015 and 2017, Narset found success in four different formats. Unsurprisingly, she saw play in spell-heavy control decks in all of those formats, which could really threaten to lock the game down with the ultimate while generating tons of value with the other two abilities. She actually found the most success in Magic's most powerful format, Vintage, where she was played in Monastery Mentor decks, which loved the extra spells she could enable, and giving rebound a Time Walk or Ancestral Recall is pretty much game over. Unfortunately for Narset, the Mentor got restricted in 2017, and she hasn't gained a point in Vintage or any other format since then. At number 3, it's Distortion Strike. For 1 blue, this sorcery gives a creature plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, and it can't be blocked. Obviously, if you get this effect twice, one creature can chip in for a ton of unstoppable damage, and only for a single mana. This effect has been particularly attractive for Infect decks in Standard, Modern, and Popper. Infect decks use creatures like Glistener Elf, which have the eponymous mechanic. These creatures do damage in the form of poison counters, and once your opponent has 10 of those, they lose. If you can buff an Infect creature and make it unblockable, it can end the game in a hurry, especially because Distortion Strike is unlikely to be the only buff the Infect creature gets. It hasn't only seen play in Infect decks and Popper either. In the past, it was also used in Kiln Fiend decks, which like Infect decks could quickly win the game, but they had to do it by doing 20 damage. Kiln Fiend can be rapidly buffed by lots of spells, and the strike not only qualifies as a cheap spell, it lets you get around your opponent's creatures. While it doesn't have any points so far in 2024, it's fairly likely it'll top 8 some more events in the future, especially in Popper. At number 2, it's Blossoming Calm. For one white mana, this instant gives you hexproof until end of turn, and you gain 2 life. Casting this in response to something that targets you effectively counters it, and you get some life too. And for good measure, you get the effect again on your next upkeep. In other words, this rebound spell is a burn deck's worst nightmare. It's from Modern Horizons 2, so the only 60 card formats it's legal in are Modern Legacy and Vintage. It's gained all of its points in Modern Sideboards, where it's not only great against burn, but the plethora of cheap disruption like grief. It's likely to continue to gain points in the future, but it'll never catch the number one card on the list, which has a massive lead. And that card is... Ephemerate. For one white mana, this instant exiles a creature you control, and then returns it to the battlefield under its owner's control. This is a great way to get extra triggers out of Enter the Battlefield abilities. Spending one mana for two triggers is pretty amazing. Ephemerate is another card from Modern Horizons 2, so it's never been legal in Standard or Pioneer, but it has seen play in every format it is legal in, including Legacy and Vintage. It sees the most play in Modern, though, where it is used not only to get extra triggers out of creatures like Grief, which you can also ephemerate in response to the Evoke Sacrifice trigger to hold on to the creature indefinitely. But you can also use Ephemerate on creatures that you reanimate temporarily, like when you bring back Atraxa with Goryeo's Vengeance. Not only do you hold on to Atraxa if you do that, you get that awesome Into the Battlefield ability again. Unsurprisingly, it also sees a ton of play in Popper Flicker decks, which specialize in the same sort of thing. So, those are the top 10 rebound cards in Magic. 
If you're interested in casting a spell for free on your next upkeep, check out the description where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each card that appeared in this video. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to catch up on past videos, including many more that look at mechanics, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.